Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. News Radio 78, WBBM, Chicago. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Here, the commonplace is not our brew. If boy meets girl, you can be pretty sure that the expression in her eyes might conceal a demon or a witch. In a way, this story is like that, because not one but several persons are possessed. Its origin goes back 20 years and might have gone farther back except for a man's good behavior. For what? His son, Rob Hudson, is in a reflective mood. I was only seven years old, Margot, when he was sent to prison. And that was the end of my boyhood. Were you ever bitter? I mean, kids are cruel. Oh, sure. I had lots of fights defending him. The kids called me killer. <laughs> nice, huh? Poor Rob. And you're still defending him. Because I can't believe he murdered his best friend. <laughs> mystery story, The Secret of Laurels, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Norman Rose and Don Scardino. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If you'd really like a big car, but you really think you ought to buy a small car, maybe what you ought to buy is a mid-sized car. To be specific, a Buick Century Custom. The Century Custom, you see, offers a lot of the room and comfort you look for in a big car. And the trim size and the V6 engine give you a lot of the benefits of a small car. But the Century Custom has one more thing going for it. It's a Buick. And no matter what size car you're looking for, you just can't do much better than that. I did it! I did it! What's really so bad about hay fever? You kidding? I can't breathe, I can't work, rest, I'm all red-eyed, nitchy. Then take contact. The cold medicine? Right. Contact? Contact. The 600 tiny time pills in one capsule help block pollen's attack up to 12 hours. All day? All day, while you work. All night, while you rest. I didn't know. Contact contains the hay fever relief ingredient doctors prescribe most. Allergies contacts business, too. Take when needed, only as directed. This is Arnold Copper co-author of Psychic Summer. I remember we were sitting in my beach house on Fire Island that night, fooling around with a Ouija board. And suddenly, there was a chill. Arnie, the glass is moving again. It's spinning faster. Wait! It's, 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 Arnold, we'll die. Look out! We'll the chandelier! Oh, my God. How did it happen? What you have just heard is a recreation of a real event and just the beginning of the psychic summer I nearly didn't live to tell about. The house no longer exists. People have moved and I feel free to tell exactly what happened. I know how incredible a story psychic summer is, but it isn't like the exorcist or the omen because psychic summer is true. Psychic Summer, the startling bestseller about a real-life psychic encounter, now a Dell paperback. What is destiny? A course through life, predetermined by fate, and most of us believe in it. The belief is very old. The Greeks and Romans believed in the fates who controlled the birth, life and death of every man. They're considered cruel because they pay no attention to the wishes of anyone. And they are cruel to the individual, but also to those close to him. Someone goes berserk and kills. That mad act casts a pall over his family. Philip Hudson has had 20 years to think about that. Rob? 
Welcome back to life, Dad. I thank you for meeting me and for saying that. There's a life ahead for you. I know that. Oh, maybe. I certainly haven't helped yours. Rob, I'm very proud of you. I've often thought of what I put you through and your poor mother. The disgrace killed her. Don't think that because it isn't true. Look, I'm a doctor, remember? Mm, I never forget it. That's a great achievement, Rob. Under the circumstances, remarkable. I'll make it up to you. There's nothing to make up. You've served your time and you're a free man. Oh, hardly that. I'm free, but I'm not free. People don't forget or forgive. To them, I'll always be the man who murdered Johnny Marsh. I'm an outcast. I can't pick up life where I left it, Rob. Your Margot knows what I mean. Meaning what? You have felt my disgrace. That's undeniable. And your wife, I'm sure, has felt it for you. Your loyalty has placed a chip on your shoulder. I, I'm not aware of it. Oh, don't kid your old man, doctor. Admit what I'm saying. Well... Oh, that's better. If I know Margot, and I know her only from what you've told me about her, I bet she's told you many times not to be defensive. Am I right? Well, yes. I'd never turn my back on you, Dad, no matter what you did. Let's come to that. What did I do? Well, you were so jealous of Mother and Johnny Marsh that you murdered him in the library at Laurel's. And then I was convicted and sentenced to life in prison, but released after 20 years for good behavior, whatever that might be. Rob, let me ask you a blunt question. Sure, go ahead. You've been loyal to me all these years. Why? You're my father. Mm -hmm. Any other reason? Well, despite the evidence... I can't believe you'd commit murder. Well, everyone's capable of it. Well, that may be, but you wouldn't. You do... don't want to think that I murdered Johnny, isn't that it? Yes, I, I don't want to think it because... Now, let me finish for you. If I murdered Johnny, your defense of me becomes a cruel joke. Oh, well, that expresses it pretty well. I'm sorry, Dad. Uh, don't be sorry. You've been right. Johnny Marsh was my best friend. There were rumors about him and your mother, but... Well, they were never substantiated. Yeah, I, I know. I've checked into that. Rob, I did not commit murder. But, well, the evidence... Airtight, I know. Let me amend what I said. I might have murdered Johnny, but I'm convinced that I didn't. Well, then, who did? I don't know. But I intend to find out. <laughs> man he is, Rob. Thank you, darling. I think so. He was always good to me when I was a little boy. He taught me to ride, and he bought me a horse. Mm -hmm. And then it all went smash. I was a kid whose father was a murderer. I like him very much. I wish he'd stay with us. Too much to do. He was an important man in Jefferson Falls. He wants to recapture that image. He'll stay at the Lee Hotel until he vindicates himself. Or has to admit that he blanked out and really did murder that man. That could have happened, of course. At the trial, he said he blanked out. Couldn't remember what happened. Because of his position and Johnny Marsh's reputation, the court wanted to show mercy. Otherwise, he'd have been hanged. Johnny really turned on the ladies, right? I guess so. <laughs> I remember him, of course. He was at our house, Laurel's, a lot. Why does your father think he's innocent? Well, you heard him, Margot. But I didn't really understand him and his talk about character. Do you? It's the world he moved in. Johnny Marsh may have had his eyes on lots of girls, but he'd never fool with anyone in his set. That was an unwritten law. Uh, unheard of. So those rumors about Johnny and your mother weren't true? No, the two were flirtatious, but what my father is saying is that he never was really concerned about them. If he wasn't jealous... He had no motive for the murder. All right. If he didn't murder Johnny, who did? The housekeeper and your mother found him dead in front of the fireplace, and your father sprawled on the floor with a revolver in his hand. I know. You don't think your... your mother... Well, I don't want to, but I've wondered about it. Hmm. And Mrs. Grove? No, no motive. She was our housekeeper. A nice, simple, competent woman. I liked her. I don't 
don't think he's got a chance, Rob. He was caught cold. He must have murdered Johnny. You can't get around the facts. What can he possibly dig up now that might help him? Your mother's dead. Your old home is run down. No one will buy it because of the story and the rumors. Hmm, the haunted house. That makes me sad. Laurel's was a wonderful place. I remember it clearly. Victorian. Lots of fireplaces and the library with its books and the smell of leather and, and fruit wood burning. Mm. My favorite room. Keep the memory and forget that the murder took place there, Rob. I may have to. All of it should be forgotten. Maybe it's foolish to rake up the past. Good evening. The real estate agent gave me this note. Oh, you want to see the house? Well, I know that it's late. But there's no electricity here now, so if you come back tomorrow... Oh, I won't be here tomorrow, Mrs. Uh... Betsy Grove. Used to be the housekeeper here years ago. They kept me on as the caretaker, the owner. Well, you best come in. Oh, thank you. I, I won't keep you long. Oh, that's all right. But you won't be able to see much. I just got candlelight. You best come back to the kitchen. The other rooms are empty. This is Laurel's, isn't it? That's right. Used to be a regular mansion, one of the finest in Jefferson Falls. Are you interested in buying Laurel's? Well, I might be. Needs lots of money for repairs. It's real run down. Why? Why hasn't it been maintained? Well, it's... Is there something wrong with it? Well, ever since what happened, it's got a bad name. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Oh. What did happen here, Mrs. Grove? What the heavens? That's what happened. Who fired that gun? Ain't no gun, mister. Hasn't been one for 20 years. That sound is just the old house acting up. That was a gunshot, Mrs. Grove. Someone fired it. 20 years ago. And a man was murdered. And Mr. Hudson was arrested and sent to jail. And the gunshot? On this time of day, going on six, you can hear it. Well, that makes no sense. Well, you heard it. What does it mean? Don't ask me. Is the old house trying to tell you something? Nothing to tell. He deserved what he got. Mr. Hudson? No, the other man, Mr. Johnny Marsh. He was carrying on with Mrs. Hudson, so Mr. Hudson shot him dead. Uh, Mr. Hudson murdered the other man. He had a right to. Mrs. Hudson and Johnny Marsh they were... They carried on. She was a flirt. You could see what she was up to. And that Johnny Marsh got lots of girls in trouble. Mrs. Hudson flung herself at him. It happened when he was sick, Mr. Hudson, when he was laid up. Oh? They rode horseback, the three of them. Mr. Hudson broke his hip and was in terrible pain. He was laid up for months, and they still went riding. The wife and Johnny Marsh, you can imagine what happened out there on the trail. Oh, I see. Uh, so he was here? In the library, stretched out on a sofa. Johnny Marsh and Mrs. Hudson walked in, and Mr. Hudson shot him. Something like that. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, you were there when the man was murdered, weren't you, Mrs. Grove? Well, who told you? Of course it was. It was in the paper, but that's long ago. No one told me. You see, I was there, too. Huh? I am Philip Hudson. <gasps> the murderer. Did I murder Johnny Marsh, Betsy? Of course you did. Not, not, not that I blame you, Mr. Hudson. No, no, please leave. You're, you're giving me a terrible start. Why? You, uh, you coming back like from the grave. You're different and you got a look in your eyes. Please go. You make me afraid. Who did? Betsy's daughter. Wasn't her name Rose? Oh, that's right. Rosie Grove. She... I know her, Phil, from the hospital. Handsome woman in her late 30s. She's a, a nurse in pediatrics. Oh, you must know her, Phil. Dark red hair, good figure. Right, I've seen her, but I never talked to her. So that's Rosie Grove. Mm -hmm. She used to babysit with me, remember, Dad? I had a real crush on her. And you never introduced yourself when you became an intern? I had my eye on a younger nurse, you, Margot. <laughs> Rosie's old enough to be my mother. Oh, hardly. You were seven, and she was about 19 when I was arrested for shooting Johnny Marsh. Margot, you see her every day? Almost. Why? Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking. 
Rob, do you remember Johnny Marsh? Sure. I liked him. Your impression? Handsome, manly. He had uh, charisma, presence, appeal. And those lively eyes seldom missed a pretty girl. Mother? No, no. He made hers sparkle, but I don't believe Betsy Grove when she implies that there was an affair. No, no, I, I mean young girls around town. What's your point, Dad? I helped him out of a couple of scrapes with angry parents. Rose? Is that what you're thinking, Phil? Rose? I, I don't get it. I do? Rose was around Laurels a lot, wasn't she, Phil? Oh. Hmm? If Johnny Marsh got Rosie into trouble... And if Rosie was at Laurels on the day of the murder, she might have murdered Johnny Marsh. <laughs> Stone wrote, it is better that ten guilty men escape than that one innocent person suffer. Justice is not perfect, and innocent men have been tried and convicted before because circumstantial evidence has condemned them. Is Philip Hudson innocent of murder? Did he deserve imprisonment? His search for the truth about himself or someone else continues. When I return, with Act Two. I guess I'm lucky. My family's always been healthy. Oh, a touch of constipation now and then. But we've got X-Lax for that. When you need a laxative, shouldn't your first choice be the one more families buy than any other? That's today's X-Lax. Families like the chocolatey taste. You like the way X-Lax works gently overnight for relief in the morning. Next time, make gentle chocolatey X-Lax your first choice for occasional use only as directed. We've always been healthy, and X-Lax is part of that. At Singer, it's our 126th birthday, and it's going to make buying the sewing machine you've always wanted a piece of cake because we're having a sale with prices so ridiculously low, they're practically gifts. Take our Fashion Mate machine with a drop-in bobbin, zigzag stitch, snap-on presser foot, and a magnetic needle plate, and it's all yours for an incredible $79.95, and that's only the beginning of the biggest birthday sale in years. But hurry, a party like this can't go on forever. Price is optional at participating dealers. Noisy muffler. Don't compromise my size. The next time you hear that noise, don't look around cause it might be your car. The next time you hear that noise, the sound of your muffler announcing you're coming. Neutralize it. Modifize it. Midas today. The next time you hear that noise, don't compromise. Midas size. Midas your car, and you'll never have to buy a muffler for it again. Because at Midas, if anything ever goes wrong, we guarantee to replace the muffler free for as long as you own your American made car. The next time you hear that noise, don't compromise. Midas size. Visit one of the 42 Midas shops in Greater Chicago. Midas, experts in the installation of mufflers on most foreign cars. If mystery surrounds murder, it is wise and practical to study the victim. Why was he killed? Once this is determined, then match death with motive and study the suspects. There may be several, each with his own reasons for thinking of committing murder, but only one who is irrational enough to do it. I am referring to premeditated murder. The problem for Philip Hudson is that he acted impulsively when he murdered Johnny Marsh. He was proven guilty and now is attempting to prove his innocence. It is nine o'clock at night. Betsy Grove rings her daughter's doorbell. You're busy, Rose. Oh, come in, Ma. I couldn't tell. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, why do you stay out there at the laurels? No electricity, no telephone. It's out of the Middle Ages. It's a living, Rose. Mm. Well, I'd rather be a lighthouse keeper. Hey, you look kind of upset. Anything wrong? Mr. Hudson, come back. Huh? Mr. No, he's out of prison. Mm hmm. Well, did you see him? He come to the house just before six and he heard the shot. I didn't know who he was. Oh, how could you forget him? His mustache is gone and his hair's white and thin. Oh. 
Well, what did he want? He wanted to see the library where it happened. Oh, well, why not? There's a curse on the room. <laughs> oh, come on, there's no such thing, Ma. It's just an empty room. You've heard the shot, Rose. Oh, or something that sounds like a shot. I can't believe that shot goes on echoing all the time. Murder was done there, Rose. And it's like that dead man never wants it to be forgotten. Oh, well, I've forgotten it. Well, does Mr. Hudson want to buy the house again? I don't know. He just wanted to see the library. Yeah. The murderer returns to the scene of the crime. Well, let him see the room and then forget about it, Ma. He'll go away. No, he won't. Not as long as he wonders what happened. Well, there's nothing to wonder about. He murdered Johnny and that's that. I'm glad he did. Oh, you know what I went through. You turning your back on me. You ever think back on what you've done, Rose? <sighs> Once in a while. It's only natural. There was a funny look in his eyes. Mr. Hudson? Kind of intense. And boring into you like he thinks maybe he didn't do it. What are you talking about? Didn't murder Johnny? <sighs> of course he did. We were there when Mrs. Hudson came through the door and Johnny on the floor and the gun in Mr. Hudson's hand. Yes, it's true enough. He did it all right. What else is bothering you, Ma? Oh, it's all come back in a heap. Him showing up, the shot, all of it. The trouble you had. Um, I'm lonely and afraid. Of what? I told you a hundred times, move in with me. I make good money at the hospital. No, no, no. You have your own life to lead. Oh, well, it's a dandy, believe me. You should have married. There was only one man for me. I believed he was serious. Then I find out I was just another doll in his collection. Well, I'm alive. That's something, I suppose. And he's dead. When I feel low, I think about that. He's dead. That makes me feel good. <laughs> I owe a lot to Mr. Hudson for killing that pig. Let me reconstruct the scene of the shooting. I'll draw the library and place the furniture. How big was the room? About 25 by 18, paneled in wood, with a fireplace here opposite the double door, which was always kept open. Your desk in front of the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Here. And to the left, a big sofa. To the right, French doors opening onto the garden. You were lying down on the sofa. Mm -hmm. My legs propped up and my hip hurting like the devil. Mrs. Grove came in with my painkiller pill and I took it. And the revolver? I've been cleaning it. They say that I left it on the mantel. So, Johnny Marsh comes into the library. You get up, go to the mantel, pick up the revolver and... Shooting. Oh, I don't remember, Margot. All that is a blank. And they found you on the floor with the gun in your hand. Who found you, Phil? Betsy was there, and my wife was standing over me. She staggered, and Betsy led her to a chair. What did she say? I can't believe it. Johnny is dead. Johnny is dead. And then Betsy or Rose called the police, and you know the rest. Dad... How could you have gotten up and gone to the mantel for the revolver and... No. Wait wait a minute. Johnny was shot facing the door. How come? Well, what do you mean? Well, if you'd gone to the mantel for the revolver and Johnny came through the door and you shot him, he'd have been facing the fireplace. And, and didn't the bullet lodge in the paneling by the fireplace? Yes. But the positions are wrong. Look, you're at the mantel facing Johnny in the open library door. Only if you faced him with his back to the fireplace can you explain how he fell and where the bullet lodged. I see. Johnny ha had to have his back to the fireplace and Phil had to come around and face him. And that doesn't make sense. He'd see you had a revolver in your hand. You don't remember any part of it, Dad? No, no, none of it. But you're right. It doesn't make sense. It wasn't gone into at the time because I was found on the floor with the gun in my hand. How high on the paneled wall was the bullet hole? I don't know. Why? Were you taller than Johnny? Well, an inch or so, yes. And he was shot through the chest. The position of that bullet hole is important. Why, Rob? It can determine from what height the gun was fired. Given Phil's height and Dad's, the bullet would be five feet or so from the floor. If it's higher, 
then the shot was fired by a shorter person or from the floor. Well, that's where they found me, son. You went to the mantel, got the gun, fell down and fired him? Unless there was a struggle, that doesn't make any sense. We have to examine that bullet hole, Dad. I intend to. Three other persons could have fired that gun and then wrapped your hand around it. <laughs> your mother, Betsy, or Rose? Yeah. What about Rose? Was she in the house at the time? Why, I think so. Betsy had said earlier that Rose wanted to talk to me. What about? I don't know, but I can guess. If Rose was in trouble, she wanted advice from me. Or money. And if Johnny Marsh was the man, Rose had a motive for murdering him. Well, so did Mother if Johnny had rejected her. Well, that's possible, I suppose, but... No, I can't see it, Rob. I'm supposed to have had a motive, and I admit I sometimes wondered about your mother and Johnny, but... But if I'd been concerned, I would have spoken to him. But Rose is another matter. What about Betsy? No, no, I can't see that. She was devoted to the family, and it was Betsy who gave me the medication. Were you given a blood test after you came out of your blank out, Dad? No. I was hustled to the jail, and bond was refused. I was too dazed to think. You... You think that I might have been drugged? Well, that's one way of explaining blanking out. I'm convinced you didn't shoot him. So am I. Are you? I'm thankful. But then, who did? And how do I prove it? But before we get dizzy theorizing, we have to find out why Rose wanted to see me that day. I'll make a lunch date with her tomorrow, Phil. Now, be discreet. I was fond of little Rosie. Well, she won't talk. Why should she? Leave that to me. You ask the right question, and you'd be surprised how much a person will tell you. Oh, yeah? What kind of question? What if I ask how you go about adopting a baby? Hi, Miss Grove. You mind if I join you? Hello. How are you, Margot? How's obstetrics? Oh, we delivered three this morning. It was pretty busy. Oh, well, keep them healthy so we don't have to come to the rescue. You've always been in pediatrics, haven't you? Yeah. Little kids get to me. Mm -hmm. They're so helpless. Mm -hmm. I wish I had one. Oh? Oh, what's wrong with that doctor husband of yours? Uh, no, it's me, Rose. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'm, I'm sorry. You don't know my husband, do you, Rose? Not really. Oh, I know he's an internist, that's all. Why? Did you ever wonder about him? <laughs> well, what kind of a question is that? Well, the name means nothing to me. Hudson? Mm -hmm. No, I knew some Hudsons a long time ago. My mother was their housekeeper. That's, I don't know, 20 some years ago. You know, there's lots of Hudsons. Mm -hmm. His name is Rob. Do you mean to tell me? Rob Hudson? Uh-huh. Well, I was a babysitter to a little kid named Rob Hudson. Now, don't tell me. But I do. That little boy is my husband. Well, I don't believe it. <laughs> Rob. And I didn't know him. I've got another surprise for you. His father's come home. No surprise. I heard. Oh? Released for good behavior. Mr. Hudson. That name brings back memories. Mm. Bad ones. Right. I suppose. But I don't regret what he did. I hated the man he killed. You did? I'm uh, not a pure spinster, Margo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I uh, I don't mean to pry. Ah, uh, it's no great secret. Johnny Marsh got a couple of young girls pregnant, including me. I said he had to marry me, but he told me to run along. I begged him for money. He had none for me. Yeah, it's a messy story. Mm. You, uh, you had the baby? Yeah. Mm. Johnny's mother helped me out a little. And the baby? Oh, I don't know. I let her go for adoption. Mm. It was a long time ago. Do you know Laurel's, Marco? Well, yes, I've seen it from the outside. Well, it was some place back then. I lived there, you know, with my mother. We had two rooms on the third floor with a view of the garden. It was beautiful. I left when I was 18 for nurse's training. Mr. Hudson paid the tuition. Was there um, anything between Johnny and Mrs. Hudson? Who knows? 
My mother thought so. She was straight-laced, I can tell you. When she found out about me, she condemned me straight to hell. She got her wish. I'm 38. All I've got is my job. Otherwise, the last 20 years have been empty. You never thought of getting married? Not after my experience. Anyway, Johnny, no matter how rotten he turned out to be, he was it. Mm. He must have been something else. He was. You know something, Margot? I'd like to see Mr. Hudson again. He was very good to me. I'll tell him. He killed Johnny. He doesn't think so. He blanked out when he shot Johnny, he says. Maybe prison really blanked him out. Will you see her, Phil? I don't know. I'm surprised that she talked so freely. I'm not. It was the biggest thing in her life. The only thing. Johnny Marsh and his murder. There's no question in her mind that I shot him. No. Well, she also had a motive. She was in trouble and Johnny didn't want to be bothered with her. Your best friend was a real dandy, Dad. I knew it then, Rob. I guess you were like a father to her. I helped, but she deserved a chance. You know, I can't imagine Rose hurting me. Allowing you to go to prison? I can. If Rose shot Johnny and set you up as guilty, she'll never admit it. As time goes by, people have a way of fantasizing, believing what they want to believe about something that happened. I was stuck. It has to be Rose or my wife. Or Betsy Grove. You said no, Phil, but from what Rose said... Her mother is a very self-righteous person. Margot's got a point. It comes down to what is sin. Think of the Inquisition, the witch hunts. It was death to the disbelievers. You give me a self-righteous person, I'll give you... No, no, I can't believe that Betsy would commit murder. For the sake of her daughter? Well, she had rejected the daughter, Rob. Well, what if it was both of them? Betsy gave you the medication. It must have knocked you out. Rose walks in, grabs the revolver, waits for Johnny to appear... And bang. If that's what happened, there's nothing to be gained in my talking to Rose. It's too long ago. I have no evidence with which to make a charge. The position of that bullet hole, Dad. Yeah, that's clever, but after 20 years, who's going to buy theory? We have too many suspects. Me, your mother, Rose, Betsy. Well, I'll call on her again. <laughs> if she'll let you in. Oh, she will. And then I'll make my accusation. If I come down hard on Rose, Betsy might break. And then we just might begin to see the truth. It's a funny thing in life how friendships arise and what their consequences might be. Here is Philip Hudson, a sound, sensible man, who, when he was young, became friendly with Johnny Marsh, a different kind of person. Unsound in the sense that he lived for the day and forgot about tomorrow. We know the outcome of that friendship. The question we're pursuing to an answer is this. Is Philip Hudson destined to live out his life as a marked man? I'll return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. agonizing experience to be imprisoned for 20 years, thinking all the time that you did not commit the crime of which you were accused. Yet, there is the evidence. You must have committed murder. If, in fact, you did not, how can you ever trap the guilty person? Not with facts. They're against you. By admission? Maybe. Under the pressure of fear and guilt, a person has been known to break down. And that is what Philip Hudson hopes for as he waits for Betsy Grove to open the door to Laurel's. Oh, Mr. Hudson. I have to talk with you again, Betsy. I've nothing to say. I don't want you in the house. You see this? Oh, you must be crazy pointing a gun at me. Now step aside and close the door. No, no Mr. I have something to say to you. No, please. And you will listen. Please put the gun away, Mr. Hudson. It reminds you of 20 years ago, doesn't it, Betsy? The day that someone shot Johnny Marsh. You, you murdered him, you know that. I don't think so. 
That's what we're going to review. Now, carry the candle into the old library. No. And do as I say. No, no, please, Mr. Hudson. Dear Lord. The ghostly sound of the shot that killed Johnny Marsh. You know what it means? Here, I'll open the door. Oh, it's like a tomb. It is a tomb. And it's held a secret for 20 years. And ever since, you can hear that ghostly gunshot at the same time every night. Because I was falsely accused of murder. Isn't that right? No, sir. You killed him. I seen the gun in your hand and so did she. And Rose? Hmm? Rose? She was here, Betsy. Don't you remember she wanted to talk with me? No, Rose wasn't here, Mr. Hudson. She says that she was. Rose? You talked to her? She told my daughter-in-law Rose was here. And you know why Rose wanted to talk to me, don't you? Rose and I weren't close. No, I don't know. She was pregnant. <gasps> Merciful heaven. My life was cut off. And I spent 20 years in prison for a crime someone else committed. Rose was pregnant by Johnny Marsh. Oh, that feels... He wouldn't marry her and he had no money. Oh. That's why Rose wanted to talk to me. Isn't that so, Betsy? Hmm? Of course it was. Why throw that disgrace in my face, Mr. Hudson? You admit that Rose was going to have a baby and that she led it for adoption oh. to the Davis Foundling oh, Home. Oh, you're cruel. Poor little girl. Unwanted. Rose couldn't support the baby and she lost her head. What are you saying? Uh, Betsy, you gave me my medication. Do you remember? Oh, she was in bad pain. The painkiller never before had knocked me out, Betsy. Why did it knock me out then? Why did I blank out? Maybe you just fainted from the pain. Oh, no. I think that you drugged that medication. What are you saying? You know what I'm saying, Betsy. Rose hated Johnny Marsh. She was in the house waiting to see me. You came in with my medication and drugged me. Rose grabbed the revolver off the mantel and waited for Johnny to come, and then Rose shot and killed no, him. No, not Rose. No. Rose murdered Johnny Marsh. No, she didn't. Mrs. Hudson was... Uh, she and Johnny... Are you saying that it was Mrs. Hudson? I'm saying nothing more. Did my wife put Rose or you up to drugging my medicine? You won't get another word out of me. You can't come back after 20 years and blame innocent people. I'm going to tell Rose. You don't have to. I'm going to tell her myself. Don't you go near her. You try and stop me. I have an idea. It's pretty far out, but it might work. What is it? Um... Remember the play within the play in Hamlet? Sure, that's how Hamlet trapped the king. Well, why don't we reenact the murder? When a detective is stuck, sometimes he gets everyone together, goes over the case, and then someone turns pale or something, and that's it. But we don't have all the suspects. I could be Mrs. Hudson. I mean, your wife. Well, you'll never get Rose or Betsy Grove to cooperate. Oh, there's a way around that. Yeah, what is it? Well, I have to think it out. You two visit. I need a pencil and paper and some quiet. I won't be long. I hope. Well, it's pretty far-fetched, Rob. Mm, what else is left? No one's going to confess. Don't you want to try it? I don't want to make a fool of you two. We believe in your innocence, Dad. So do I. And I'd like to make it up to you. But the chance is so slim, it's Rob. It's up to you, Dad. If you don't want to take it... I don't think that I do. What's changed your mind? The facts... I sat in prison so long, I convinced myself that I didn't murder Johnny Marsh. But the facts were conclusive. I was jealous of him. And there was talk. You see? Motive, opportunity, the revolver in my hand. Let's call it temporary insanity and let it go at that. No, Phil. I heard what you said, and no. We're going to try my scheme. Someone's gotten away with a horrible crime. I'm not revengeful, Margot. Well, I am. Now listen to me, and I'll tell you why Rose and Betsy will cooperate. Margot, you're a dirty little sneak. You said it was common knowledge, Rose. Did you have to pry and gossip about it to Mr. Hudson? Do you know what he did last night? Yes. He told my mother that I had murdered Johnny Marsh. Well, I'm seeing a lawyer when I go off duty, and Mr. Hudson will hear from him. I'll sue him for everything in the book. And you, too, for putting the idea in his head. Okay. Is that all you can say? Okay? You're in trouble, Margot. Look, he was sentenced for murder, and he comes back, and he says he didn't do it? Oh, well, that's a lot of nonsense. He didn't, Rose. Well, of course he did. Is he crazy or something? No. We don't think he did it. 
But I did. Is that it? That's what he suggested to your mother. Suggested? He pulled a revolver on the old lady. She's a wreck. And he'll pay for that, too. Oh, I liked Mr. Hudson. He did a lot for me, but this. Tell him we'll see him in court. Oh, accuse me of murder. He didn't, Ralph. Well, of course he did. He said I did it. Or Ma and me conspired to do it. Well, you were glad to see Johnny die. Well, I still am. But I didn't murder him. You could have. Oh, look, if you'll calm down, I'd like to tell you something. Mr. Hudson says he doesn't remember the shooting. Well, what else could he say? He may have had reason for the shooting. Sure, jealousy. But you also had reason to shoot Johnny Marsh. I did, but I didn't do it. Can't you get that through your blonde head? Well, your mother... Oh, come off it. My mother... She hated me for getting into trouble, not Johnny. She knew what he was, but shoot him, oh, not a chance. And then we come to Mrs. Hudson. What about her? What if Johnny had rejected her? Uh, no good. They were together a lot, and they rode those trails. You know what can happen. Oh, that supposition. I am not naive. Mrs. Hudson was a beautiful woman, and she enjoyed her conquests. Johnny was one of them. What if he wasn't? The set he belonged to just didn't tamper with each other's wives. Do you get what I'm saying, Rose? That she murdered Johnny? That's what we really think. Oh, she's dead. You'll never know. We may. If you and your mother will help us. Huh? We want to reconstruct the scene of the murder. Tonight. In the library. Just when that gunshot is heard. What for? To see if we can't jog your memories. Mr. Hudson, or you, or your mother, just might remember something about what happened that will point to the truth. I, I do remember she came into the room, but she didn't go past me. I wonder. The windows in the library are, are French doors, very beautiful. See? That's what I'm getting at. If you'll help us, Rose. Well, Mr. Hudson accused me of murder. But why? Ask yourself why. He did get your mother to admit you were there, Rose. But don't you see? He was fishing for information. But Margo, he did it. The gun was in his hand. But he was in pain. The revolver was on the mantel. And the shot was fired from the wrong direction. What? Well, tell me about that. Oh, will you help us? Just you. We, we won't bother with your mother. Oh. Okay. One more shock and she's gone. I'll show her. All right, I'll play your game. I'm grateful to you, Rose. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Hudson. Last night I could have killed you for saying I murdered Johnny, but Margot explained what you were up to. It's okay. I'm, I'm going along. Maybe Ma or me will remember something. You haven't told your mother about our plan, Rose. No. I hope this doesn't scare us to death. Now, Marco? Remember, you'll be on the staircase, Rose. Okay, I do remember that. I was coming down to talk to Mr. Hudson. And, Rob, you, you're outside. I'll be at the French door. Now, Phil, don't forget to check the door and unlock it. I will. You know, thinking about it, it could have been Mrs. Hudson. She was hard and always had her way. If Johnny passed her up, I'm sure she could have shot him. You just didn't insult Mrs. Hudson. All right, Phil, it's time. Now go up to the door. Hello, Betsy. I really shouldn't let you in, Mr. Hudson. I told Rose how you come raving in here last night and accusing her of the murder. Well, I've changed my mind, Betsy. Well, thank the Lord for that. I thought you was out of your head. What is it this time? Let's go to the library. Oh, but, Mr. Hudson... There's you... nothing to be afraid of. What are you up to? Betsy, will you listen to me very carefully? Go on. I want to see if I can't reconstruct what happened 20 years ago. What? Now, I'll be on the sofa cleaning my revolver. What? You bring me my medication. Just pretend medicine. A, a glass of water will do. We'll hear voices. What? What voices? We'll see you and I. Oh. Did are coming back to the library? Maybe. Oh, you give me a chill. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. You're a sensible woman. I'll just open the door. 
Oh, I hate this room. Now, you get the medication. Oh, and Betsy, this is important. Oh. Think back. Think back 20 years. 20 years. Mm-hmm. You were suspicious of Johnny and my wife. Oh, and I think of how they pulled the wool over your eyes. And think about Rose. Pregnant by Johnny. Oh, that dirty... Think about all that. It's 5.30. Now, I'm on the sofa. Uh, all right. Now, begin. I, I pretend to give you the water. That's right. Mm-hmm. I had it to me. Mm-hmm. Then, what did you do? I... Uh... Uh, gone from you. I, I remember that. You said put it on the mantel. Hello, Phil. We're back from our ride. Uh, on the floor. Get on the floor, Mr. Hawkins. Right, so what are you doing? Drag on your to the floor. Johnny, he's dead. You killed him. Ma. Oh, Ma, what have you done? I saw it. It was you. You murdered Johnny Marsh. Oh, good Lord. He tricked me. Mr. Hudson tricked me. I killed Johnny because of you, Rose. As a disgrace. He was rotten. I killed him. I killed him. Oh, and you tricked me, too. You told me that Mrs. Hudson had... I wanted the truth. Now I have it. My mind and soul are clean. I'll call the police, Dad. No, no, Rob. I'm not vindictive. I'll speak to my lawyer in the morning and let him do what is right. But you have to be cleared, Phil. I will be. But I'll urge the court to be lenient with Betsy. Now, let's leave this room for the last time. Did you notice anything different about it? I didn't hear that ghostly gunshot. It's gone. A gunshot laid to rest. <laughs> so Philip Hudson was vindicated. The evidence against him was circumstantial and, as we have learned, it was contrived. If he and Johnny Marsh had not been friends, if Mrs. Hudson had not been attracted to Johnny, if, 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 such a big word, if. Earlier, as we set out on our visit to the realm of the macabre, I mentioned destiny. Is life predestined for each of us. Think about it. I'll return shortly. You may feel it's an embarrassing subject, but since one out of every three people suffers hemorrhoid symptoms at some time, you should know about Preparation H. Preparation H gives prompt, temporary relief from occasional pain and itch in many cases, but Preparation H does more. Actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. With so many having the problem, it's comforting to know that Preparation H helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues. Ointment or suppositories. Use only as directed. You've never had a really exotic car, have you? Because you've always felt that you needed something a little more down to earth. But you still want that exotic car, don't you? You know what you need? A Buick Skyhawk. It's small, it's V6 powered. Hey, it's even got a hatchback. Now that's down to earth. But with things like bucket seats, available five-speed manual transmission, and that laid-back, low-down styling, it's not exactly plain vanilla. The Buick Skyhawk, the car you need and the car you want. I am your summer. I am the delight in a child's eyes as castles crumble in the surf. The crack of a bat that sends a crowd of 50,000 leaping to its feet. Capture my excitement, my sunshine, in rich, exciting color pictures. Ask for the film in the familiar yellow box. Kodak film for the times of your life. Think of where we'd be without college-trained minds. It was college-trained minds that conquered polio, smallpox, diphtheria, tuberculosis, that gave you vitamins and x-ray and miracle drugs. But many colleges, unfortunately, are in deep financial trouble. They desperately need your help. So make America smarter. Give to the college of your choice. A public service message for the Council for Financial Aid to Education, presented by this station and the Advertising Council.
A pebble dropped into a still pond sends out waves. A deed sends out waves of a different kind. What you do affects others and the interactions begin. When the deed is murder, the effects are great. Mr. Hudson and his son and daughter-in-law suffered a great deal. It's behind them now, but they'll never forget their trial. Our cast included Norman Rose, Don Scardino, Ann Williams, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule, and x lax This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.